Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today I have two things to share with you. First, I had the feeling that today is a masterboard day. <laughs> But I had some strange feelings in my belly and I thought perhaps we can create a reversed masterboard. If you want to know what that is and what's the difference between a normal masterboard and a reversed masterboard, then please watch this video. You will learn about that in a second. And the second thing that I want to share with you are some new Christmas papers that I have in my Etsy shop and also some older papers that I have. Before I do that, I want to thank you so much. I had a winter shop update a few uh, days ago and I have shown you some winter papers from my Etsy shop and you have blown me away <laughs> with comments and messages and also orders in my Etsy shop and I want to thank you so much for that. If you have missed that video and also perhaps the little surprise that is hidden in that video, I will link that down below for you so that you can check that out. And if you are into junk journals and if you're looking for some digital winter papers, then please watch the video. I think it's worth it because there's a little secret. <laughs> Actually, you can save a little money if you watch the video and if you follow the instructions from the other video. And you were so thrilled about the papers that I thought we are going on with some more papers. And I have created something that many people have wished for. So I will show you that first. Then we will create the reversed masterboard. And in the end of this video, I have some more older Christmas papers that you also can find in my Etsy shop that I want to show you uh, because you've appreciated to see the different papers and also what you can mix and match. So we will do that for Christmas in this video as well. So let me first show you this. <laughs> so the first set that I want to show you is this one that is called... Christmas Ledger Junk Journal Pages. If you're not familiar with my Etsy shop or if you are new to Etsy or my digital papers, let me quickly explain something that can be really helpful if you're trying to search for a specific item in my shop that you have seen in one of my videos, for example. This, what you can see here, is the preview picture that you also can find on this main page of my Etsy shop. This here is the name of the kit and this is the name uh, of what it is. Do you know what I mean? So um, here's the actual name. This set is called Christmas Ledger and this says Junk Journal Pages so you know what it is. And if you want to search for a specific item that you have seen in one of my videos, then you can just write down this name to remember it and put it into the little search bar on Etsy when you are on my shop page. Um, the link is down below in the description box. Then you can just type in this and you will immediately find this item so that it is a little bit faster and easier for you. Many of you have wished for a typical Christmas paper, but in combination with ledger paper. So I have made this set for you that has these red poinsettia um, plants, flowers, uh, you know, <laughs> and some ledger in the background. And perhaps if you know me really well and if you know my channel, you see that this is really similar to the Halloween ledger that I have shown you a few weeks ago. Um, some of you have seen the Halloween ledger and you've wished for a Christmas ledger. And this is what I have done for you. Of course, your wish is my command. <laughs> I think these turned out really, really cozy and I was really surprised how different to the Halloween ledger these look. <laughs> so I will link the Halloween ledger uh, papers down below for you as well, if you don't know them. And there's also a set without all of these flowers and without uh, this white stuff that you can see here, um, this gessoed background. 
um, so that you can also find some really neutral letters in my shop. I will link that down below for you as well. So um, that is everything on this that you can see on those papers here. <coughs> oh, excuse me, please. But without the flowers and without this white stuff so that you only have the letter that is really cool for collages and of course for um, using for um, neutral pages that you want to put into your junk journals perhaps. So that is that was Christmas Ledger and then I also have another set that looks really similar but that was also a wish from some of you. I have called this Blue Point Poinsettia Ledger. When you see it in a second then you will see that it is nearly the same thing like that what I have shown you a second ago but in blue. But I wanted to have this color variation. On the one hand you can combine those really well with each other of course um, and on the other hand there were many people who wanted these blue flowers here and of course this is a totally different vibe yeah so this is blue and the, the other one is red but <laughs> perhaps you can see that this feeling of the papers is really different um, I think this belongs like this sorry so we have this and of course you can combine um, those with any other of the Christmas papers that I will show you in the end of this video and I think um, I mean I'm <sighs> This kind of strange junk journaler, yeah. <laughs> if I would make a blue journal, for example, in spring, I mean, blue and spring for some people doesn't match each other. For me, it's okay. I, I can make a blue spring journal, and I think you can do that as well. I ha would have no problem to put those papers in there if the blue fits. Do you know what I mean? So, this doesn't have to be for Christmas or for winter. You can of course combine that with any other blue or bluish papers as well. You can use that the whole year. I mean, uh, who says that you can't do it? And to make that clear, these sets are the same except of the color. So Christmas Ledger has the red poinsettia flowers and blue poinsettia Ledger has the blue poinsettia um, flowers. I wanted to have a really different name so that you can remember and realize which one it is. Yeah, so don't be confused. But these are the both both names. And for my project for today, I want to use two pages from this set here. And I've already chosen two. So I want to use these both pages. And now I would like to create a reversed masterboard. And perhaps you are asking yourself, what the heck is that? I have searched on YouTube. I have never seen that, that someone did it like I will do it today. So I'm hoping very much that this is new. Let me quickly explain what a normal masterboard is. What would you do if you would like to create a normal masterboard? I guess you would take a piece of paper as a base and then you would take some scraps some leftover pieces that you have from other projects and then you would glue the whole paper uh, with those scraps so that you have no white anymore and you would have a rectangle that is collaged and then you would perhaps um, throw some ink on top or you would stencil over that you could stamp on it or put some stickers or die cuts or labels or whatever and when you have this whole thing glued um, full with those things then you would take it and um, some people make a copy of that so that they don't lose the original piece and then they cut this copy into several pieces but they cut that blind so they take the actual collage to the other side and then they cut it and use those pieces for making tags or journaling cards or other little things for your junk journal. I have uh, I think one or two videos where I'm doing that in this normal way. I will link those down below for you as well <clears throat> so that you can check that out. If you have never made a normal master board, then you can check that out. Um, and I thought, why can't we go the opposite way? Why can't we do that reversed? So my idea is I want to take these both, both pages so that are no scraps. That is 
something that is uh, finished in some way, yeah, that are no scraps. So I want to take this and then <clears throat> I want to take my uh, paper trimmer. I will put that upside down so that I can uh, cut but don't see where I cut. Like I would do it with a finished ma master board. When my master board, my normal master board uh, would be finished, then I would do it exactly like this. Cut it blind so that I don't see what I'm doing. So I am cutting, first of all, this thing into three pieces. Of course, you can do as many as you want. And now <coughs> I want to mix those up a little bit so that they are not in the order that they were before. Um, and now in the next steps, I will show you two different ways how you can do that. The first thing is, I would say, more controlled. And perhaps you are a beginner and you think, ooh, I can't do it completely blind, completely without seeing what I'm doing. Then you can do it like I will do it in the following seconds. But I will also show you a next level of that. Yeah, but both ways would be possible. So I take my first piece, no matter which one it is. And then I am taking some clear tape. This one here from Scotch that is a little bit matte and I can suggest a matte tape because glossy looks always a little bit strange when you tape it. So now I'm taking my single pieces here and I'm just gluing them back together. I mean reversed masterboard. Do you know what I mean? Normally you would cut it and you have it but ooh. <laughs> but now we are doing it the other way around. We are gluing this back together and now you can, of course, make this as big as your paper trimmer could handle it. I will do it like this. I will put three pieces together like this so that I have approximately the same size of the page like I had before because I know my paper trimmer can do that. So I will do it with these three as well. So when we have glued everything back together, then we have two sheets again. And perhaps you see these white lines here. And of course you realize that this is the border of my printing. I have printed these digital papers not borderless this time because I wanted to show you that these lines in the end can be part of your design and they can look really, really interesting. And I know that many of you can't print borderless. So I've decided to set my printer to print this thing here um, so that you can see that it can look really interesting. And now I would like to show you the next level of doing this. So if you're really brave, you can also change this method a little bit or this technique. Um, we will cut this again so that we can not see what we are doing. So I will put this here. So this step is the same step like I've done before. But now I want to bring this to a next level. And uh, yeah, the next level, that sounds a little bit strange, but I want to show you variations how you can do that. So I'm cutting this and now I'm cutting that into way smaller pieces than before. You can also turn your papers around a little bit so that you get really different um, sized rectangles. But I can recommend to do this cutting step really carefully and um, please make sure that these are rectangles. Weird shapes would be not so easy to glue together. Um, that is really time consuming to get them back together when they are wonky. So I'm trying to get rectangles and then I'm mixing that up without looking at them. <clears throat> and now this, this next level can be done like this. Of course, you can also glue this back together without seeing what you are doing. So that means I will take this now Where's my tape? And I will glue that back together without 
seeing what I'm gluing. Um, this way you also get this tape, of course, to the back side of your paper. That could be good for all of you who think that tape on the front side is not good. I mean, perhaps you don't like that and perhaps you want to have that on the back. You will see in a second um, another reason why that could be good to have the tape on the back. So I will just glue this back together. So when we have that, then we have three of these tiny pieces left over that were a little bit too much here for my rectangle, but that doesn't matter. Let's see what that is. Okay, we can save that for later. And here on the smaller piece, we have now something like this. Looks really cool, but not so bam, <laughs> but please wait. <laughs> and here on the other piece, we have this. And now also not so spectacular at the moment but now I want to go a step further and I want to do something that you probably would do on a normal masterboard as well I would like to take some stencils and I want to go with these both this one is um, 006 from Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous and this one is 020 Zero twenty two, also by Tim Holtz, and I'm using Freight Burlap Oxide Ink and this little uh, brush thingy here. And now I want to go over some of the areas with the stenciled pattern, but really randomly, as you can see, just a little bit here and there. It's art. <laughs> Don't care about those things when you uh, mess up your stenciling. That doesn't matter because it's art. <laughs> so we have that and I will do the same here. And then I will also go over some of the areas with the other stencil. When we have that, it looks like this. And now you can perhaps see a little problem that we have to deal with. Because here, can you see that the frayed burlap ink is way lighter here and here and here? That's because here it's on top of our tape. And this area and this and this would never dry because this ink is not made to dry on such a plasticky surface. If you want to avoid that, then please do this next level gluing and just glue the pieces from the very beginning from the back so that you have the tape only on the back side and nothing here on the front. Or if you are not sure, if you want to do it like um, this way or that way, then you can of course solve this problem here relatively easily. Since I have used oxide ink for my stenciling, it makes totally sense to spritz a little bit of water now. And with spritzing this water, we can also get rid of this kind of stuff here. I'm just spritzing a little bit of water, mainly to those areas where the tape is, but also a little bit here and there to activate this uh, oxide effect. And then I'm taking a dry paper towel and I'm just pressing that to my master board. Lift that up and as you can see nearly all of the ink has gone because it soaks into the paper towel. The rest you can carefully remove like this. Mm, of course you could also remove um, the ink directly after applying it just by rubbing over the tape carefully. But I thought, why not spritzing some water? Because then we at the same time get this cool effect here. Can you see that? This cool oxide effect here from the ink. And um, I also want to avoid that when I go over that without water, that I have to rub too much and that I smear the ink next to the tape. That would look, uh, I guess, really strange and not so nice. 
Um, so I will quickly do that here on the other piece as well where the tape is. Depending on how much of those tinier things from the steps before you have left over, you can now decide what kind of material you want to use for the next steps. So as you can see, I have these little guys here, but that's all that I have left over. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm taking these and I'm also cutting them blind a little bit smaller, like this. And when I look at this, I think that is not enough for my next step. These are only a few pieces. So um, you could now either take this piece, this smaller piece that you have uh, perhaps as a second, uh, made as a second piece, or you could of course also take any kind of scraps now. Um, you could take some old scrapbooking paper that you don't want to use anymore. You could take some other digital papers or design papers of your choice or whatever, trash, junk. When we have that, we can take this as our base because it's the biggest piece that we have. And then we have all of these tinier things here. And before I glue them down to the base, I wanna take some ink and I wanna ink the edges a little bit so that these pieces stand out really much later. I wanna have them as little highlights on the top, not as, not as a focal point or something like that, but I wanna have them stand out really much. So now I wanna take some really strong glue. I'm taking some bookbinders glue. And now I will glue down these pieces. Of course, now that I, I can't do that blind, <laughs> that would look really strange in the end. So I have to look at this front side now, but I'm taking these pieces and as you can see, because we have uh, taped the single pieces in the last step from the back side, we have something like this here, of course, where the paper is overlapping. We have this. We don't want to have that. So I'm taking this and I'm just gluing that down like this so that I can get rid of all of these ugly areas here. Of course, you could also take a glue and uh, go with the nose of the glue here below the paper and glue that down. But why? I mean, this is way more easily. And <clears throat> of course, faster and more fun. <laughs> so I will glue all of these down. And I also, uh, I, I also want to do something else, not only gluing these loose pieces down with these rectangles, but I also want to break the rectangles that I already have here a little bit. So um, if I, for example, see this white line here and I think, oh, here's tape on top, no ink will hold there, no matter what I will do in the end, this will stay there and I don't like it. Yeah, then take this and break that line with another piece like this. So when this is dry, of course, you could decide to stop here, but I want to show you some more variations, what else else you could do. And I have taken out my postage stamp album because now I want to glue some postage stamps here as well. I found these priority airmail thingies. Those are stickers, really cool because no glue needed. I want to include some of those. I don't know how many I have, but I think that looks really cool. I think I have three or four of these. And of course, you could also now add some labels or things that you have. I like to put also those things to my masterboards that I perhaps normally wouldn't use so often. Yeah, so for example, these things, I don't know, I have them forever but uh, I haven't used them yet. And sometimes I'm asking myself, why not? But you know, you have the, those things that you have, but you don't use them. And I have a ton of postage stamps, so why not including some of those here as well? 
um, here I have some numbers and labels and that stuff and I also want to put some of those here and there And what you also, of course, could do now is you could stamp a little bit here and there. <laughs> so I have decided to take my Field Notes stamp set by Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. CMS396 is the number. And I have chosen this because there are several stamps that fit my digital paper really, really well. These little writings here this handwriting and also this field label thingy but also some of these numbers could look really great on this design for stamping i want to use some chipped sapphire distress oxide ink because i want to have some more of the blue on my master board and this color actually fits the printable really really well but of course you could also stamp with any other color that you like and I'm just randomly putting these stamps over this design now. And for some of the numbers I want to use some freight burlap distress oxide ink the same one that we've used for the stenciling in the beginning when we've finished this step it looks like this and I really really like how this turned out <laughs> really cool and now I want to cut this again but that will be the last time that we will cut it um, because I want to make some journaling cards out of this master board now. <clears throat> so now let's do the final thing. <laughs> I will first cut it, this into two pieces. Oh, let's do that this way so that we can't see where we cut. And then I will take my smaller paper trimmer because this paper trimmer is actually a little bit broken. It can't cut a 90 degree angle anymore with the help of this gray thingy so I always have to use these lines as a guide um, this has fallen down the other day and now it's a little bit wonky here so actually I don't like to use it <laughs> but this thing can only handle those smaller papers so now we can take it and we can cut it blind into smaller pieces and here I'm trying to get a nice size for my journal so of course you can do any size that you want now and you don't have to cut cards out of this you can also turn these pieces into tags or other things that you like and depending on the size of your journal of course you can vary the size of what you cut in this step and then we can turn that around and we can be happy <laughs> with what we got really interesting um, the next thing that I want to do is I want to uh, glue these to a little bit uh, sturdier material I want to use some scrapbooking paper to make them a little bit more sturdy and also to cover up this ugly backside here and then I will go to my sewing machine and I will sew around them so that we have a nice frame around them with the backing of these cards you can get really creative as well. I want to show you some variations how you can do that. So here, for example, I have taken a piece of scrapbooking paper, put that to the back, and then I have sewn around it like with the other cards as well. But when I then cut that out again, I have left this tiny frame around the card and I think that gives it a whole different look. And of course, you could also um, take a paper that matches the other co colors of your journal really well to get a cohesive look with these colors as well. Here I've done nothing to the frame but also a variation I've turned the scrapbooking paper the other way around. Please ignore this. 
<laughs> this is art from my sewing machine. Um, uh, yeah, so you can make um, a patterned backside, of course, as well compared to this one that is plain. And of all, of course, you could also distress the edges. That's what I've done here. I've used some frayed burlap ink, uh, like we've used for some of the stamping, and just distressed the edges. And when you have these cards all in the same journal. They would look cohesive, but you can see they are all different and you have some tiny variations in those cards, what makes it for me really special. And now, of course, you could take these and you could put some focal points to those cards. You can leave them like they are, of course. They look really interesting, I think, but of course we can dress them up a little bit. <clears throat> and there are, of course, different variations and different possibilities what you can do i really like to use some die cuts or yeah similar things some fuzzy cut images for example would work really well i have these die cuts uh, cut out from some leftover watercolor paper where i had uh, some experiments and some fun <laughs> you know and of course now you can play around and look what you like So of course you have thousands of possibilities what you could do with these cards and what I really like to do is uh, when I have finished my master board and I have cut that up and I'm uh, I have this yeah so these plain cards then I really like to see if I have something that um, immediately immediately catches my eye and where I think, okay, that looks great, then I'm gluing that down, like here or here, and I have the card ready to go for one of my next journals. But when I now think, okay, I have no time anymore, or I have no ideas anymore, or I don't know what to put here, then I can, of course, take those cards and put them like they are into my stash, and when I then have a journal where I think that these colors would fit, I can take them out and I have this base ready to go for decorating. And I really like to have some of these in my stash because, yeah, you can save a lot of time. And with this, you have something like a starting point. You don't have a plain card in front of you, but you have something that inspires you. And that's really cool to have, of course. And now, as promised in the beginning of this video, I would like to show you some more Christmas-themed papers that you can find in my Etsy shop. And I have a little surprise for you. You can get the two paper sets that I have shown you in the beginning, Christmas Ledger and Blue Point Setia Ledger, and all of these that you will see in the following minutes with 50% off until the end of the year. All you have to do for that 
is to click to the link that is written down below this video in the description box that says get 50% off here and then there's a link and when you click that you will come directly to my Etsy shop and when you put one of these items into your shopping basket then you will get the discount automatically at the end of your ordering process. If you see something that you like here in the following minutes, then just remember or write down this name. Then you can find that really easily in my shop. But I also have listed all of the items separately down below this video. So have fun with this and see you the next time. Mm -hmm.